So it's no secret that I love my Raspberry Pis. Their price to performance for a DIYer and maker is just unparalleled. I am also a content creator and I am all too familiar with the Stream Decks and other related devices, but as a recent college grad I just could never justify the cost of getting one. But what really is a Stream Deck even? I mean isn't it just a touchscreen processor and desktop application that just run macros on your computer to perform tasks when you hit buttons? I mean how hard could it really be to make one of these? Well that's exactly what I've done. For the past just over a month I've been working on my own DIY Stream Deck using a Raspberry Pi Zero like this. This is what it would be in it, however I currently have a Pi W in it, or a Pi Zero W in mine. But I've been doing that. I've been attempting to make a Stream Deck like device that is completely DIY and it's actually about half the cost. Now in this process I've actually made kind of two variants of my Pi Deck I'm calling it, which is my DIY version of a Stream Deck. They are the comparable to the regular Stream Deck and the Stream Deck XL. The regular Stream Deck which I have made is this here, which you can see is actually powered on and working as in mirroring what's on the screen here. This is my comparison to the Stream Deck. It is a Raspberry Pi Zero. As I said, this is the W version, however it will work eventually with the regular version. And the Stream Deck comparable for this is about $150 on Elgato's website. Now my DIY Pi Deck here costs about $75 max for everything included. It uses a screen for called the Hyperpixel. It's a 4.0 touch screen that goes on top of the Raspberry Pi Zero. The Pi Zero itself now $10 for the W variant, $5 you can get for the regular non-W, and then a cable and whatnot in a case. Unfortunately, I don't have a case yet for this. That's one thing I'll get to in the future, but I don't have a case for that. And then I've also been making a variant for the Stream Deck XL, which is this which is the actual official Raspberry Pi touchscreen which retails about $75 and in fact inside is a Raspberry Pi 1A Plus. Now I'll talk about more why I'm using the 1A Plus in a bit but that's about $25. So in terms of cost just straight up the DIY version is about $75 is my estimate as opposed to the $150 of the regular Stream Deck and the XL version of this is about $100 as opposed to the $250 of the Stream Deck XL. Now of course when you're buying a Stream Deck you're not just buying the Stream Deck itself you're also buying into their ecosystem and their software compatibility on your computer which is something that of course I am currently lacking but I'm hoping to make it up over time. Now this entire project I'm doing is open source it is all going to be on my github which I'll link below. Feel free to go and visit it, make pull requests, help me out in any way possible. I would like to make this just a thing you can do. I mean just anyone who is interested in programming, anyone who's interested in knowing more about this stuff, Raspberry Pi Zeros, anything about this, I, I want you to be able to go out and do this yourself and learn and just be able to make this yourself. I think it's honestly been pretty cool for me. So now getting into a little more technical about what I've done. Again, I've told you the Stream Deck here, which is actually connected, which is this is what we're reflecting, is a Pi Zero and a four inch touchscreen. And software wise, I have been developing this on stream for the past month or so, if you're not following me there twitch.tv slash turkey dev feel free to check me out there but i've been developing this system or application here for the past month and so far it does very basic things of what you of what i at least would really want to have in a stream deck now as you can see here this has the ability to have rows and columns basically a grid that you can configure so you can actually go from three to four rows add or remove rows whatnot to have the buttons change on here now it's all touch screen there's no actual physical buttons it's one downside, but that's what I've chosen to go with here. The application you see in front of you is actually all developed in Java Swing. Yes, it's Java. Again, you can get this whole debate about what's actually the best choice of a language, GUI framework to get into. I chose Java because that's what I know the best. This is a project I really wanted to do well in to actually not go out there and try to learn a new language, but actually try and actually make a full product. And it's Swing just because it's the best GUI for Java that I know that's included and I'm not a fan of JavaFX and just honestly Swing is still powerful in itself. It's old but I still think it's good and still good enough for this project. The code on the Raspberry on the other hand is in Python. It is just simply TK inter tinker whatever it's pronounced. It's a very simplistic GUI. It does not mean anything fancy. It's literally just a grid of buttons. That's literally all it is. So. The Python code is far less intensive than the actual desktop Java code is. In terms of current features for the Pi Deck I'm making here, as you can see here we have a desktop application where you can change the number of rows and columns in the button array that you see on the Pi Deck. 
You can also go through and change the buttons to do different actions. So if you say I click on this one, we can see the button info, we can change the color of that button. We can actually add an image, which these three are an image. We can also set the text, which these also have. And we can also then add actions. In terms of actions, I'm working on Twitch integration. That's the first kind of integration I'm working on. I don't have it yet. But in terms of actual actions I have working, currently there are four. There is the IO category, which is a sound, a key press, or a message. And I also have a miscellaneous section, which includes, things, includes switching profiles. The first action of a sound allows you to play a sound through your speaker system, as you will see here. Nope. Simple. Basically, you can play the sound, different volumes, that type of stuff. The next one you can do is a message or a key press. This allows you to do things like muting your microphone, muting audio, whatnot. I have this for muting, this is Discord here, and then this is my team's audio. So I can go ahead and mute my systems there, do those key presses, whatnot. The other action is typing a message. I use this primarily for Unicode or kind of emojis. These two allow me to do the upside down, upside down smiley face and the eyes emoji, two emojis I've used a fair amount, but of course going and copying and pasting those from online is a pain every time. So I have very easy button presses to paste those in. And you can also just do a full on message. As you can see here, you can just type in a full message and have that be sent there. The last action you can do is the profile switch. Currently I have two profiles. I have this one here, which is default. If I hit this swap button in the bottom right, you'll notice it switches profiles and now you get an entire new button set out. And this one actually is a six by eight. And that's what the button or the profile switch is. Profiles are there to allow you to have different button layouts, all that type of stuff. And now you can actually switch between them by hitting buttons. I switch back to the original one and go about it that way. So as you can see, it is a very basic tool set currently for this project. I mean, it's only been a month. I've been really only doing this on stream development wise, and we're kind of slowly going about this. There are a lot of challenges and hurdles. Again, this is a lot for me. This has a, been a great learning experience for a lot of this, but basic tool set is what we started with now. The biggest thing going forward right now is to get better reliability, prevent errors and crashes anymore, get the kind of full one here started up so that way it'll work better and go about it that way. One more thing I do want to point out or do want to talk about in this project is the choices I made for some of this. Now in the Excel variant here, the reason why I'm going with a Pi 1A Plus is simply because it can be powered off of USB power. Now this whole project, it felt weird to me if you had to provide supplemental power to this beyond the USB. And so that's why I went to the Pi A Plus is because one, it provides a way to connect to the computer via serial. Now, the Pi 1, 2, 3, actually I don't know about Pi 1, but the Pi 2, 3, and 4, all one require way more power than the USB power can supply, but they also have a USB chip in between the actual processor and the USB hub. There is no way for you to run serial or any sort of gadget mode on these Pis. The Pi 1A Plus and the Pi Zero, however, have these gadget modes which allows you to open up a serial connection between the Pi and this Java application I developed here to actually send messages back and forth to control them that way. Serial is currently the main interfacing method I have with these. It's not ideal, but it's been the best so far. I initially did uh, ethernet gadget modes where you're actually creating a socket between them. However, this caused men many issues between just applications trying to use that as a network connection, most notably IntelliJ, was just going bonkers when trying to build things. Gradle for some reason would just hang and hang and hang for like 20 plus minutes just because it thought that that was an actual network connection and just a lot of things. So, so at the end of the day, again, this is a big project just for me to learn things. I am honestly really wanting to use this. I still want to get a case on this smaller Pi variant, but just a lot of things just for me to learn and to develop something and also just to fear how these things are made. Obviously, you know, I could just go and drop $150 on a stream deck, or I could spend half that amount and build my own and then learn and develop my own application and own tool set that way. And also and have an open source for others to contribute to, but also use themselves. Again, this is in the prototype phase. This is the initial prototype I have. I'm hoping that you guys are pretty interested in this as I am. I would really love more help and I would love some more people to and have helped me out to know what they're doing in some of this field. Um, I know, again, I know we're on some Java code, but some of the lower level stuff like the serial connections and getting the pies up correctly and just 
some of the more fine tuning stuff is somewhere that I've not had much experience with. So I've been totally learning that over time. And I would love to get some help on that and get just some more eyes on this to help me out and help develop this to be an actual better product than it is. So going forward in the future, I do have some things I want to do. Again, I want to improve stability and reliability in this, but I also want you or anyone at home to be able to make this themselves with basically no knowledge of any of this. I want anyone to have access to this. I want you to be able to take a Raspberry Pi, a screen, connect them together, flash an OS onto an SD card and be just good to go. So that's kind of the more end goal, future goals. But for now, we have what we have. We have the proof of concept, a nice prototype working that I've been using. It's been fantastic. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys are excited to see what comes out of this. This won't be a weekly or any sort of video. This will probably be this initial prototype. And then down the line when it becomes much more stable, much more functional, I'll probably do another follow up. But I thought I'd share this with you guys get this out here, see who was interested in helping, but also just to show this off because this has been a really cool project I've been working on for the past little while. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all next time. Peace out.